Good morning, everyone. So today we are going to be bringing. Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning we're going to be bringing a word to you, and I've titled it "Walking in the Gentleness and Kindness of God." And there are some of us that struggle with that. And I'll admit, there are times that I struggle with it. So, Lord, we just come before you. We thank you and we praise you for all those that are watching us live stream, that are here with us today, those that will be watching at a future time. We just thank you and praise you for the work that you're doing in and through each and, each and every one of us as we hear, the, hear your word come forth through this message. I thank you and I praise you that we all have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive your truth, that we can grow in you and be more and more Christ-like each and every day. We thank you for it. So today, our foundational scripture is Galatians 5, and I'm going to read 16 through 23 in a minute. When I read it, I am going to read it through the Amplified Version. So love is a topic that many, many, many Christians talk and preach about often, right? Because God is love. And what's, what more is there to talk about than the love of God, right? Right? But it's not as common to hear about the fruit of the spirit of gentleness and kindness. You know, um, and I didn't write it down. I don't remember exactly what the scripture reference is. But there's a scripture that tells us that we need to be as wise as serpents and as gentle as doves. And I got to be honest with you. I've not always been that way. Anyway, let's read... um, Okay, God only calls us to truth. God not only calls us to truth, he also calls us to gentleness and kindness. As a a born-again believer, we should be gentle and we should be kind all the time. We have to remember, and and I know I get into this further down, but once you gave your life to the Lord, you're no longer your own. So in all reality, your feelings don't matter. I remember one time, eons ago, the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, I gave you feelings to protect you, not for you to live by. Let that sink in for a minute. He said, I gave you feelings to protect you, not for you to live by. Okay? So we're going to read Galatians 5, 16 through 23. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. And it says, But I say, walk and live habitually in Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by Holy Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh, of human nature without God. For the the desires of the flesh are opposed to Holy Spirit, and the desires of Holy Spirit are opposed to flesh, godless human nature. For these are antagonistic to each other, continually withstanding in conflict with each other, so that you are not free, but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. But if you are guided, led by Holy Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the doings, practices of the flesh are clear, obvious. They are immorality, impurity, indecency, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, or ill temper, selfishness, divisions, or dissensions, party spirit. Did you catch that one? Party spirit. Actions, sex with peculiar opinions and heresies. Envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let that sink in. But the fruit of Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes, is love, joy or gladness, peace, patience, and even temper or forbearance, kindness, goodness, benevolence, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness and humility, and self-control, which is self-restraint and continuance. 
Against such things there is no law that it can bring charge. So when we think about this and we are in a situation and we're harsh with our tone, with the way we're saying things or what we're saying, do you think that someone's going to receive what we're saying? No. That's when we're walking in the flesh and not in Holy Spirit. If we're being led by Holy Spirit, we know that we have to be, you know, they say that there are those people you have to walk on eggshells around. And it's not so much necessarily that you have to walk on eggshells, but it's that you don't, we don't want to be a stumbling block for people. And many, many, many times we are because we've got the Lord, we've got it all, we know it, we're, we're perfect. The fact of the matter is, we're supposed to be becoming more Christ-like each and every day, causing us to become more like Christ, more gentle, more kind to those around. Honey, can you go get a, a, a thing out there? Okay. So anyway, um, we walk in God's ways when our words and responses, even speaking in gentle or in difficult truths are filled with kindness and gentleness. I know we understand what I'm saying. I also know it's not always easy to do, especially when you got someone in front of you that you just want to slap the spirit of stupid out of. Lord, forgive me, but that's the truth of the matter. The fact of the matter is we are all on different levels. We are all in different places with our walk, okay? We've all had different teachings. We've all had different understandings and revelations from the Lord through situations we've been through, through, through teachings that we've sat through. And therefore, because of that, we're all at different places in our understanding, okay? When we are kind, when we are gentle with our words, when we're trying to explain things to people, we have a bigger effect, a stronger effect on those around us. On our, it, it, the, our co-workers, our family. I mean, you've all heard the story of us tell you how Nani, we lived with Nani for years and years and years. And it wasn't that I could just, um, it wasn't that she wasn't receiving, it was that she was at, where she was at with her level of faith. And as she was absorbing and taking in and watching and seeing what was going in in our lives, that's when the effect came in. That's when the full effect took place because at, at some point in time something was said or done or maybe it was even just Holy Spirit said okay now do you understand what I'm saying but we can't affect people if we're not loving and compassionate and caring so one thing that has been really heavy on my heart for years now and, and I mean years I mean like pretty much my whole walk is this how is the world, the world, supposed to see the mercy and grace of God if the people of God are not merciful and gracious towards one another? Remember, the world's watching us. Hey, I hate to tell you this, but the Christian world is watching us. That's just the reality of it, okay? Okay? And so they're, they're watching how we treat other believers, but they're also watching how we treat people that are not walking with the Lord. You know, when we see people that are really struggling out in the world that are lost, instead of making the comments that many, many people do of, oh, you know, what about him? I can't believe he's not getting a job. I can't believe he's doing this. I can't believe he's doing drugs. I can't believe he's into alcohol. I can't believe A, B, C, X, Y, Z, you name it. I can't believe they're doing it. The fact of the matter is, and I've heard this saying so many times in my walk, why are you surprised at what the world is doing? The world doesn't know God. Why are you doing what you're doing? Which is, in essence, being critical. Because God didn't tell us that we have to criticize everyone. He just didn't. It's not the way it works. Okay, so we need to remember that we are the ones who are being watched, as I said, both in and out of the church. People are watching you. Whether you like it or not, this is the reality of it, okay? They're watching to see you mess up because that's what the world does. 
Sadly, now I know I say this in and out of the church. We have to remember that just because someone says that they're a believer doesn't mean that they're where you're at, that they have the level of understanding that you do. And I don't care if they've been walking with the Lord for 30 years or three days, okay? Because you, you can find people who've been walking with the Lord for years and years and years, and I hate to say it, but we're still living in this fleshly, fleshly body, which at times gets the best of us, okay? Which will make us say and do things that we wouldn't normally as believers do and say, okay? So don't ever say, well, they're a believer, and I can't believe they just said A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Because if that's the case, why are you? Okay? <clears throat> We're supposed to be, um, and, and this, by the way, pushes people away from God. It's, we're supposed to be drawing people into God, not pushing them further away from God. They don't need that. They don't need that. They need to know the love of God. And the love of God is supposed to be coming through each and every one of us. Okay? And we're not perfect. Not yet. But one day. Okay? If you want to read about that, I did reference um, Romans 3, 9 through 24. I'm not going to read it now. Because um, you really need to study that out. But Romans nine or 3, 9 through 24. However, we should be striving to be more Christ-like each and every day. So that the people around us, whoever they are, wherever they are, see it. Okay? How many times have you heard me say that anybody, anybody, any human being, anyone that has life and breath in them can speak to you if you have ears to hear? Understand that means any human being. Now, that doesn't mean that the person that God chooses to use is going to know that they're being used by God. How many times, hey, we all hear ourselves at times say something and we're like, well, where did that come from? Right? God knows what he's doing and God knows how to do it. <clears throat> we know that in Numbers 22, 28, uh, oh, I do have it here. Numbers twenty two twenty eight. 28, <clears throat> the Lord used a donkey. That's where he said, Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have... I think it struck me these three times. Struck me these three times. He can use a child. He can use a non-believer. He can use a sign on the road, a bumper sticker on someone's car. Have you ever been, if I've ever seen something and gone, okay, God, I get it. You know what I'm saying? He can use anything. The thing is, are we willing to see, to hear, to receive, okay? Um, so don't get mad when, some, when God uses someone that you're not expecting. Because he will, and he can, and he does. Remember that God is using that person for your benefit. However, then, from that point of receiving and hearing what they've said, it's up to you to apply and to do to change. Nobody else. You know, I, I, there's, there's been a thing going around on Facebook for years now about um, God sending the airplane and the this and the that and the other thing, and then the person dies and goes to heaven, and they said, but God, I don't understand why. And he said, I sent you all these things. You didn't get it. <laughs> you didn't, you know, you understand what I'm saying? God places people and things and situations in our lives all the time to help us. We've got to be willing to recognize the help that's in front of us. But unfortunately, we live in a world where we've got to criticize and, and judge and analyze everything, and so we can miss it. It, it, it happens all the time. The other thing is feeling that we need to correct people all the time. It's not our job. It's really not our job. I can't tell you how many times I have found myself in situations with different people, people that I love dearly, that you know I've preached to, I've, I've talked to, on and on and on. Same subject, different subjects, it doesn't matter. And I'll just say, you know what, Lord, I, I place them in your hands. Send someone to them that they can receive from. Because if they're not receiving from me, and this is something you want them to get, that's between you and them now. I don't need to keep going on and on about it. Now, and hear me, I'm not saying that that means that we don't. If we know, if we see someone walking in sin, and we don't do our part as a brother or sister in the Lord, 
to help them, then there's a bigger issue too. So there's a fine line there, but you got to know, you know, we got to know our brothers and sisters. We need to know, we need to be able to discern, are they receiving from us or aren't they? Do I go on about this or do I just shut up and pray? Because it, it, it certain times, you know, when you know something, when you, you understand a certain whatever principle of the Lord and you've gotten it, as I said earlier, we're not all on the same level. We're just not. I, it just, we live in a world, you know, we got brand new believers coming into the kingdom every single day. They're not going to obviously be where you are, Dave. They're not going to be where you are or you or you it just the reality is we are all in different places and we all have dirf, a different set of circumstances that we've lived through which has created us to be the type of person that we are okay so again we have to understand who we are talking to and who we're dealing with okay number three being gentle and kind these days is countercultural. And we talk about being countercultural here all the time at CCF, right? We're called to look, look different than the rest of the world around us. Remember, as I said earlier, once we gave our life to the Lord, we instantly are now in this world, but we're not of this world. Okay? We have that Holy Spirit connection that those that are not walking with the Lord don't have. That's why when you find yourself in a, in a situation and you're like, oh my God, what do I do? Instantaneously, he'll give you an answer. Now, it's not to say that people that are not walking with the Lord can't call upon the Lord and he won't give to them. Okay? It doesn't mean that. The thing is, do they recognize? Do they understand? Okay? Because some of them do and some of them don't. You know, I, I remember for years, now, I was raised Catholic my whole life, um, so it wasn't that we had no God in us or anything like that. But my mother, every time as a single mother, every time she had an issue with the car, she would lay her hands on the car and she would say, come on, Bessie, someone up there loves me. We got to get to where we're going. And I'll tell you what, we got there. Because <laughs> God knew. And he knows her, knew her heart, okay? He sees the bigger picture that so many of us don't. And so many of us want to navigate and fix everybody and make their life perfect. And we can't. It's not our job. Okay? It's not. Again, like I said, we are no longer our own. This doesn't mean that we're better than those that are living in the world, that are living without Christ. We're not better than them. We're here to show them, to lead them, and to guide them. How do we do that? Gentleness. Kindness loving, lovingly, okay? Um, let's see. Now, we're supposed to just act and, and look different than them. I mean, you know, a person, you should be able to tell a person who's walking with the Lord. You should be able to. You should be able to see the fruit in their life. Doesn't mean you can in everybody's life. It, honestly, it doesn't. But it also doesn't mean that because you can't see the fruit in, the life that, in their life that they're not walking with the Lord. And we need to understand that. Okay? I, I truly do believe, and I don't remember where I heard it from originally, but they say that when we get to heaven, there's going to be people there, though, that, there that we never expected, and there's not going to be people there that we expected to be there. Matthew? Okay. Okay. So what does that look like? for us to look different, okay? It means that we need to forgive those that have hurt us. You know, for some people, forgiveness is a huge, huge stumbling block. I could never forgive them. You wouldn't believe what they did to me, how they hurt me, how they abused me, how they did A, B, C, and X, Y, Z to me. Do you know how many times we said me, me, I, I, me, 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 I, I, I? Forgiveness is a command of the Lord. I don't care if you were raped. I don't care if you were beaten to a pulp. You need to forgive. And the fact of the matter is that just because you've forgiven somebody doesn't mean you got to go have coffee with them. Doesn't mean you got to sit down and be lovey-dovey with them. Forgiveness is for you first and foremost. Because let me tell you, while you're si sitting there thinking about the abuse that was done to you, okay, 
You're just giving them more power. Let it go. And I know it's not always easy, especially when your feelings come into play. But remember what I said earlier. It's not about our feelings. God said, I gave you feelings to protect you, not for you to live by. Too, 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 far too many Christians are living by their feelings. And I'm just going to leave that there. Um, We need to work at reconciliation in broken or difficult relationships. Again, reconciliation doesn't mean that you've got to sit down and go have coffee with them every week, that you've got to get together and, and, and it may come to that. It may, but it may not. I mean, God does it different with all of us. It depends on the circumstances. It depends on what and how God wants to do what it is he wants to do. And we have to seek him to know and to trust him in the midst of that, okay? We should use our words even when we speak truth. The truth hurts a lot of people. I mean, can any of you sit here and tell me that you've heard truth at some point in time that didn't hurt you? I know I've I've had truth hurt me many times. But that's God working on you if you allow him to, okay? But we should still use our words, even when speaking truth, to build people up and not to tear them down. Now, let me tell you, I had two situations this week with family members. But it would have been so easy to rip up, tear apart, chew up, and spit out. And let me tell you, my flesh wanted to. Okay? But Holy Spirit kept saying to me, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. I had to let time go by before I could even respond to another one of them. But it's God working in and through me. Now, that person may not see it that way because they don't know the Lord. They don't want to know the Lord, or so they say. But that's, that's not my job. It's not my job. My job is to love them where they're at. And that's the difficult part for us. Because we want everybody to know the Lord. We want everybody to experience and feel the, 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 the love of God and the presence of God in their lives. We know we've experienced, each and every one of us have experienced the greatness and the blessings of God in our lives. And because of that, we want to share it. And that's the way that it should be. But you, again, I said earlier, you've got to have that discernment. You've got to know that person may not be anywhere ready, near being ready to receive. And it's not our job. Our job is just to love them where they're at. And let me tell you, I'm preaching to you, but those fingers are coming right back to me because I need to hear this too. Okay? I have a lot of loved ones out there that are so far from the Lord, it's not funny. Okay. There are obstacles to living a a life of gentleness and kindness. Some of these include (laughs) feeling that you have the right to be angry. Guess what? You gave that up when you gave your life to the Lord. Now, I know that there are those of us that get angry and fly off the handle. (laughs) Anyway, um, that ought not be. Because the fact of the matter is, anger is not from the Lord. Okay? Our world is harsh enough, and people are angry everywhere we go. I mean, come on. You go out and you drive on the road, and you got people flipping you off and cutting you off. And, you know, I, what, what do you think that comes from? Anger. They're angry, they're bitter, whatever, towards whomever, whatever. Maybe they woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That's one of my favorite sayings. I've said it to a lot of people, you know. I, I, just because you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, don't take it out on me. I'm not, I'm, don't shoot the messenger, okay? <laughs> uh, we should not allow anger to get us distracted from our primary message of hope. And I know that that's not always easy, especially when somebody does something to you, okay? Um, well, we'll get into that. Psalm 4.4 4 says, Psalm 4.4, 4, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. <clears throat> it says, don't sin by letting anger control you. 
think about it overnight and remain silent. Salah. Think about it. So what, why, my question is this, why do people make us angry? Could it be that they're not being fair? Well, guess what? I don't know who told you that life was ever fair, but I know no one ever told me it was. It's not. Nobody ever said it was going to be, OK? Or maybe they're being unkind or accusatory. How many of us have had things thrown at us that you know we've been accused of A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and it's like, where in the world did that come from? You know? Again, no one ever said that life was fair. What's your reaction to all this going to be? It truly is your choice to get angry or not. You know, the big thing I remember way back in the beginning when I first started walking with the Lord, and my son sat me down, and it was, I mean, like bullets coming at me with questions. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I couldn't, I mean, he was throwing questions at me so fast I couldn't answer them, okay? And afterwards, I sat down, and I'm like, I, I don't even know how to answer him. But I've, I've since learned the easiest answer is this. God gave us all free will. So you get to choose how you're going to respond, how you're going to react, how you're going to feel, what you're going to do in any and every situation you will ever face. Just stop and think about that for a minute. You know, the Bible has been around for thousands and thousands of years, but when we were born, we weren't capable of reading the Bible and knowing and understanding the Bible. Now, I do believe as infants, infants spirits are extremely sensitive to the spirit of the Lord. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe they're closer to the Lord than any, most any of us could be. But the fact of the matter is our society squeezes that right out of them, out of us as humans. And, and look at the world today. You know, they don't want Bibles. They don't want people preaching. They don't want, you know, truth. They don't want to live in truth. They want to live according to how they feel and what they want. Huh. So this is a good one. Ask yourself, am I getting angry because I cannot control this situation? I'm not looking for answers. Just, just something for you guys to sit and think about. Why am I getting angry towards whatever is going on? Because there's a reason for it. And maybe it's something God wants to deal with with each of us individually, okay? Um, some of the obstacles, well, one of the obstacles is having a critical spirit. We talked about this a little bit earlier, too. Let me tell you, in the beginning of my walk, whoo, uh, we were quite critical. I, I, and, I, and I don't say that proudly at all, okay? But the fact of the matter is, looking back now, I was extremely critical of a lot of people. When, I, when we left the first church, I was just like, oh, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I can't take this. And it wasn't, it wasn't that the pastor was doing anything wrong. It, I believe, for me, it was I had gotten to a point where I was ready for more than what I was receiving at that church. But that's not here, neither here nor there. I, I wasn't, well, we, well, anyway. <laughs> when we walk away from criticism, coldness, and division, we, we receive, receive God's blessing in our lives. This is called walking in self-control, which, again, is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Um, we, we really need to learn to not have a critical spirit. If you're going to be critical about somebody, if you're going to think, well, they're doing this wrong, they're doing that wrong, or whatever, the best thing you can do to handle that is go to the Lord in prayer. The best thing. You got something to say? One of the things that, that, that I always look at, if I'm being critical, or I think that I'm being critical of somebody or some situation or something, then I always look at, I turn it around and look for the solution to the problem. Right. If you think that you're walking in, in, in a critical spirit, start looking for solutions. 
people that talk to me about stuff like that, that's my first thing. Okay, so what's the solution to that? Right. What's the, if you, because typically a critical spirit is criticizing how somebody does something, how somebody um, uh, doesn't do something, how a business does something, how a right. business does. Well, if that's the case, to get over a critical spirit, look for the solution. If you see the problem, look for the solution. And that, you know, gets it, it goes away really quickly because it doesn't want to find a solution. Well, but I, I, I would also say that when you, when you say to someone, what do you think the solution to this is, more times than not, people come up with a solution and say, oh, oh, do you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, um, it's good. It's good to ask what what is the solution? What do you think it would be a good solution? What is what would help in this particular case? Let me tell you, we, we deal with it here. We have, you know, being small in numbers, we don't have a, ch a children's care. And so it's difficult. I bet each and every one of you can say it's difficult at times because we have kids that just don't always want to listen. But the fact of the matter is we're training them. This is training ground. This is training ground for out there, OK? We have to work together. We're either a part of the body of Christ or we're not. OK. Um, another obstacle to living in gentleness and kindness is being overly intense. Now, I, I put here, we need to understand that true spiritual maturity is about growing in the fruit of the spirit, and it is. When, when we're mature Christians, we understand how to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> Be zealous for the Lord. But learn, and, and I've talked about this several times this morning, learn how to be discerning. Because I'll, I'll tell you what, you can be on fire for God, on fire, and just, you know, want to share the love of God with everybody. But you can tell when you're talking to somebody and it's just going in one ear and out the other. So, you know, I, I believe the scripture says don't cast your pearls before swine because there are those that just, again, not, not necessarily that they don't want it, but that they're not ready for it. They're just not ready. And that doesn't mean that you don't like them, that you don't love them, that you don't hang out with them. It means that you love them through it, you help them, and you pray. I, I'm telling you, I don't care what the situation is. The best answer to every situation you will ever face is prayer. And if you're not taking the time to pray about your situation or anyone else's, you hear about something. You know, uh, we've got numerous people that have been added to our prayer list as of late because they're going through. It's our job as the body of Christ to be praying for each other. Now, one of them is one of our doctor's mothers. She's not there. Okay, she's not walking with the Lord. Why wouldn't I want to take the time and pray for her? She's coming to the near, near to the end of her life. I want her to be a part of the kingdom. I, I'm, 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and then, I think this is lastly. Oh, no. Okay, I guess not. Being overly driven and lacking margin. If we slow down in life and give more space in our relationships, our finances, and our schedules, it will go a long way toward helping us to be more gentle and kind. <clears throat> Busyness is a way of the world. It shouldn't, be a, it shouldn't be our lives. Listen, it's okay to say no. I would honestly rather have you say no than say yes and not show up. Okay? Honest to God. Tell me no. I, I just can't fit it in. I got too much going on. <clears throat> Again, we're called to look different from the world around us. We're supposed to be men and women of integrity. Okay? That means our yes should be yes and our no should be no. Go ahead. Being, being busy or busyness for the sake of busyness is Satan's trap mm -hmm. to keep you from doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Busyness... The, the fastest way you can tell if you're just busy or if you're actually doing what you are supposed to be doing for God is it, everything you do, because I know every one of you has thought about, you know, 
writing your own personal vision, as we talked several months ago about. Because that keeps you on pace. It keeps you from, it allows you to say, okay, in, it, you're, in your, your, your personal vision may be, you know, you, you got work, okay, in, in work, working to, for a promotion, or, you know, you may have, you know, personal development things or getting closer to God, all right, creating a stronger walk with God. If you write this out, you're able to sit and look at it and say, okay, is the, and this is what I do with the church. Everything we do with the church, I look at the vision that God has given us for this church and I say, is what we're doing for the church getting us closer to what God says this church should be, or are we just being busy? There's so many people that are busy to be busy because I need to look good and look busy because, you know, the, I, I got to always be doing something. I can't sit. I can't take my time. I can't take one item and perfect that to God's form of perfection, not Satan's, and be good at that and then move to the next thing. We just try and be busy. Oh, I got this going on. I got, you know, I, you know. You can ask Pastor Kathy. The, this phone, sometimes I want to throw it out. It, it keep goes, telling them to shut it off. It, it goes off yeah, so many it. times. And a lot of that is busy stuff. It's not stuff bringing, bringing me or the church closer to God. Does, does that make sense? Okay. And you can, you, as you look at your life, you can do that about everything in your life. Your work, your, your relationships, your... Uh, um, uh, hobbies, everything. If it's just being busy for busy, it's not getting you nowhere. Right. Right. And God's, God's not looking for that. He's, he's really not. He, in fact, you, you made a, a point in there about being so busy that you didn't have time for God. And the fact of the matter is, if people would just kind of stop doing some of the stuff they're doing and spend more time with God, they'd be amazed at how their lives would change. I, that's, just, that's just fact. Um, okay. So Matthew 5.37, um, my, Matthew 5.37, again in the New Living Translation says, <clears throat> just say a simple yes, I will, or no, I won't. Again, let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Don't, don't, see, we're too worried about who we're impressing, who we might upset, who this, that, or the other thing. When you're in tune with Holy Spirit, you're going to know what you're supposed to be doing. You're just going to know. It's not going to be, you know what I'm saying? Any, and it, oh, and it says, let your, yes, I will, or no, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. That's what the scripture says, okay? Remember, even people in the Christian arena are watching you. Although you are not there to impress anyone, you, sh you should always be men and women of our, our word. Besides, God is always watching us. And if you're concerned about anybody and their opinion, it should be God's. Okay? I don't know about you, but I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, which is in Matthew 25, 23. I'll read it in the Amplified. Matthew 25, 23, Amplified says... His master said to him, well done, you good, you upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful servant. You've been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter into the share. The sh share? I'm not sure that's the right word. It says enter into the share. Oh, enter into and share. <laughs> There we go. Makes sense now. <laughs> the joy, the delight and blessedness which your master enjoys. So here is what gentleness looks like in our lives. Gentleness, number one, gentleness repents of past unkindness. We've all been there at one point or another, and we've all said and done things that were unkind and not nice, okay? Please sit with the Lord and allow him to show you where you need to repent. I'm not, I, listen, I'm not pointing fingers, because when I point at you, I got three pointing back at me, all right? 
I'm just saying, this is something that we need to do. Gentleness, number two, gentleness listens to others. We live in a society where we feel that we all have to give our opinion, okay? Sometimes just keeping our mouth shut is better. It ought not be. Some people just need to talk. Some people are lonely and want to talk. Some people just need that. But if you can't listen, how are you going to know? I know that the more I listen to God, the, the more I listen, the more God shows me about the way that people, other people think and believe. And when you understand how other people think and believe, you'll know better how to minister to them. Okay? And learn not to cut other people off when they're speaking. Um, <laughs> we're in a society, again, where you see grown adults doing it all the time. Talking, 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 and oh, boom, 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 got to put my two cents in. First thing is it's just plain rude. And we all know that it's rude, and yet we still do it, okay? And secondly, you truly don't know what the person is going to say until they're done. You may think you do. I know I can finish Pastor Bob's sentences all the time. <laughs> That's just because he says the same thing all the time. <laughs> yeah. Now, credit, there's some people who will just talk, again, because they're lonely or just because they have nothing else to do. We have to learn to be respectful of other people's time, okay? Now, I'm not saying that if there's things going on and you need to leave, I, I, whether it be church services or, you know, you're at the store and somebody stops you because they just want to talk to you. They haven't seen you and blah, 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 blah. But you got things to do. Don't be afraid to say, it's been great to see you, but I got to go. Do you, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm bad at that because I'll just let a person talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and then I'll be like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> honest to God, that's just, it's who I am. So, but we need to learn to be respectful of each other, Okay. Um, and discern who we're talking to. Like I said, some people just talk for the sake of talking because they, they just don't have anybody else. I mean, you know, and let's face it, the world we live in today, the world we live in today, there's a lot more elderly people than there are us young ones. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of young ones who don't want to hear anything that the elderly have to say, which is a really, really sad state because the elderly have wisdom beyond. And if we would just shut up and listen, we might learn something. Oh, who would have thunk it? <laughs> you know? Number three, gentleness cares deeply and gives freely without expecting anything in return. And this is where the prosperity message is so important in every area of life. Hey, listen, we talk about prosperity here a lot in this church, and we know that it's not just money. However, it does include money. Okay? Someone, you, yeah, it may be someone you know, it may not be someone that you know, but they may need your time, your honesty, your gift, your help in some arena, your money. They may need that. If you're in tune with God, you're going to know it, okay? If you're not, you're not. You're going to think, oh my gosh, here we go again, blah, 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 blah. And that's not cool, okay? Um. Let's say your money or any other number, number of things that you may have in abundance. At other times, it may cut into something you have planned. However, listen to the Lord. What does he want for, from you for someone else? You know, you may be busy. You may have something to do, but that person may need to talk to you right now. It may be a matter of life and death. Let me tell you, there are people out there, and I know I wrote this. Oh, most people that commit suicide do so because others won't take or make the time for them. That's the honest to God's truth. Now, I've never, well, no, that's not true. Only once have I ever thought about committing suicide, and that was when my first husband was killed. And I was just like, I didn't want to be here. And I remember talking to the Lord, and I said, how can I kill me and my children? Because I don't want to go through this. I don't want to live through this. Okay? So I can, I can relate. That was my only thought ever about it, once. But it was still a suicidal thought, because I was just like, Pff. and I can't imagine being a person who has the spirit of suicide on them, 
that is going through and just has nobody. And I know that there's those helplines out there, but not everybody's willing to pick up the phone and call. So you don't know. You have no idea. I can't tell you how many times in the last couple of months I have heard people in different places say, thank you for just saying hello. People just don't even notice that I'm here. How sad is that? What kind of world are we living in? Who do we think we are? Are you a child of God or aren't you? It's something for us all to think about. None of us are better than anyone else. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your position is, what your title is, or anything else. You may be a child of the king, and praise God. Praise God for it. Child of the king, supernaturally blessed and highly favored. Yes, I am. But I will take the time, and I will sit with you, and I will talk with you. So that you can be, too. <laughs> When we walk in the countercultural gentleness and kindness of God, we will gain influence with people around us, in our family, with our friends, in our neighborhood, with our coworkers, and with the world of those that live around us. Listen, the Lord freely gave us the fruit of the Spirit. It, it's a free gift available to each and every one of us. It's our choice to walk in it or not. And that goes for every single one of them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, tenderness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. It's your choice to walk in it. So when someone ticks you off because they said the wrong thing or they cut you off or whatever, I don't care what the situ situation is, remember you've got Holy Spirit in you and he's giving you uh, self-control. Learn to walk in it. God wants to give you all the blessings that he has to offer in the, in the Bible. And he freely will as long as you follow his guidelines. They're his. You can't change them. You don't have to like them. You don't have to agree with them. They are what they are. It's your job to learn what they are and to walk in them. And it's your choice. You can do it or you don't have to. It's up to you. <laughs> He's not going to force you. So I pray that somebody got something out of this today. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for all that you've done, for all that you're doing in and through each and every one of us. I pray your blessings upon your people and Psalm 91 over each of us as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.